What's the word, y'all? Are you ready to overreact to the first weekend of the NBA playoffs? Because Lord knows I am. Today, I'm giving you a panic meter for every losing team of the weekend. And I do want to say this again. This is definitely going to be an overreaction. That's part of the, the first day of the playoffs, okay? I, I'm going to try to give you real reasons why, but again, it is an overreaction. I think everybody should be overreacting because the team that lost has less than a 25% chance of winning the series if you go down after losing game one. But if that team goes out and loses again, you got less than a 7% chance to make it happen. So, yeah, yeah, game two is extremely, extremely important. All right, let's get into it. First game we'll talk about is Cleveland Cavaliers uh, magic in the game that was uh, 97 to 83. You put up 83 points in an NBA game. It's crazy, but it is the playoffs, and most people are not putting up 130s like we were in the regular season. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, the offenses are going to be tamed down a little bit. Game plans are different. It's, it's, it's more gritty, less whistles, so on and so forth. How much did the Orlando Magic be, be panicking? Well, they couldn't hit a shot. And they basically haven't been able to hit a shot all season long. And you're trying to tell me Evan Mobley is now making himself more of an offensive threat by hitting two threes? I'm going to say your panic meter is about a five. I'm going to say a five. It's not that crazy because, again, it's not like the Cleveland Cavaliers offense was too too ridiculous. You held them to 100, 100, under 100 points as well. The the most surprising stat about all of this, and I talked about this on the Kenny Beach and Podcast. We did a full 40-minute episode to talk about every single series if you're interested is that the Paolo Bencaro pick and roll generated zero points, no assists, no total points for Paolo. That's just different. I don't assume that that's going to happen again in this series. I'm going to say the panic meter for the Orlando Magic is like a five and a half. We'll add a half. Phoenix Suns lost 120 to 95. <laughs> Whoo. Uh, this was an interesting one. Now, it all the, the saying goes, the series does not start until the road team wins a game. I, I really do feel that. This felt different. The way the Minnesota Timberwolves played them in this game was dramatically different than a few times they played against each other in regular season. Defensively, the scheme was on point. I, I talked about this again and again, they reached a broadcast in, in length, but what the Timberwolves ended up doing in this game was feeling completely okay of playing one-on-one -on -one basketball. They sent zero help on isolations, and that's just different. The first couple times they played against each other, if Kevin Durant had a mismatch on him, they sent a second body, which means that Kevin was either going to score himself or pass it, then they're one pass away to like a Grayson Allen three. And this one, because there was no help, there was Grayson Allen shooting 0 for 3. He didn't get many looks. It was uh, Jaden McDaniels on an island versus Devin Booker, and he played great. Even the Kevin Durant guard, uh, being guarded by Carl Anthony Towns worked out enough because Kevin got his but nobody else did Rudy Gobert showed why he is the DPOY and the, the reason that I was optimistic about the Suns in this one is because they're a jump shooting team and the Timberwolves are a drop team where they were not really a drop team at all the other night and it's a little bit more difficult I'm saying that the Suns panic meter is a seven and a half ladies and gentlemen let's really overreact I don't know what Frank Vogel does to to kind of uh, switch things because what they tried to do when things weren't going their way offensively was run the small ball lineup and then we saw Chris Finch say hey hold on wait a minute you gonna run small ball well we gonna run a zone yeah so what are you gonna do about that we still got Rudy Gobert protecting the paint and you still can't hit shots it was a well-coached game, and Anthony Edwards is a stud, and him versus Kevin Durant was so fun. I love that every moment of that. I'm putting at a seven and a half panic meter for the Sun. The 76ers lost their game against the New York Knicks. I honestly, I panic more about Joel Embiid's health than the fact that they lost this game. Their panic meter is like a two and a half because I thought that they pretty much did and got everything they could have won. And now the Knicks were the better team, but they made life so very hard for Jalen Brunson. I mean, so very hard. Now, if you're playing devil's advocate, you say, Kenny, the Knicks won this game when Jalen Brunson had his worst game probably of the entire series. You're absolutely right. But in this one, it was very apparent that they were completely okay with a guy like Josh Hart, who shoots 31% from three, taking as many threes as he can. And in this one, Josh Hart hit three threes in the last six minutes, and some of them were huge. If you are Coach Nick Nurse, you wipe your hands. Josh Hart beat us today. Can he do that three more times? Probably not. The minute that Joel Embiid was on the floor, unstoppable. Way better. The plus minus says everything. When Joel Embiid was on the floor, the team was better. Unfortunately, again, Joel Embiid had to lose, leave the game in the second quarter. He did come back. But that scares me more than the overall, like, oh, we lost game one. So I'm not putting it extremely, extremely high. The Lakers lost the game by 11 to the Denver Nuggets. And, and their panic meet is pretty high. Because LeBron had a masterclass first half. He was not as good in the second half. Anthony Davis had a great game at 32-14-5, and, and you still ended up losing. I think you went on one or two runs in the third quarter 
or something where it felt like, oh, here come the Lakers. But after that, Jokic and company shut that door so fast. D'Angelo Russell had another stinker versus the Nuggets. And I don't know what it is about what Denver's doing over there, but he is missing shots and missing rotations. And that combination is not good. I'm putting the panic meter for the Lakers at about hmm, probably eight and a half. I mean, I don't really have them winning a series or... You know, anything like that. But again, if AD and LeBron give you this game and you still end up losing pretty convincingly, it's kind of a scary sight. Like I said, we here to overreact. Um, the Miami Heat panic meter is a 9.7 out of 10 because I, I don't feel comfortable giving nobody a 10 out of 10 today. I don't feel comfortable giving nobody a 10 out of 10. So we're saying the Miami Heat panic meter should be at a 9.7, mostly because they they don't really have a chance to win this series. But after watching game one, they really don't have a chance to win this series because they don't have the offensive upside to compete in a seven-game series versus the Boston Celtics. You threw that zone out there, the same zone that cobbled up the Bulls and, and made it very, very difficult on Joel Embiid and the 76ers. Well, that doesn't work against the Celtics because the Celtics are a very good three-point shooting team. Sam Howell just said, uh-uh, Spolster, you can't run the zone against me because I actually got a torch. Um, Jason Tatum had to play every minute in the fourth quarter. A lot of that was like, hey, DeLon Wright going to turn into, I don't know, Duncan Robinson or whatever. But they don't have the offensive upside, and they have all the defenders in the world to make it so that the people that are the shot creators on this team, the Tyler Heroes, have a difficult time. They, they have a bunch of physical defenders, whether it be Derek White, whether it be Drew Holiday, whether it be Jason Tatum or Jalen Brown. These are people that I enjoy guarding. Uh, I feel comfortable with guarding um, Tyler Hero if I'm Joe Missoula because they can be physical. And Tyler Hero is not a guy that takes bumps and pushes very well. If you can prevent him from getting to his spot, you, you have a pretty good job of stopping him and nullifying him. And you saw that in game number one. I do want to give credit to Bam, Jaime Jaquez, and Nicole Jovich. They gave us a game. But the others, and, and DeLon Wright. Because, again, he, he turned into Duncan Robinson. But they didn't really have a chance to win the series in my eyes before. None of that changed after they lost game one. The Mavericks lost a game where there was no Kawhi Leonard. They had an eight point. Do I, let me double check that. I think they had an eight point second quarter. Uh, eight point second quarter is nasty, nasty work. James Harden looked phenomenal. And uh, him and Zubac's connection looked great. Which is a good character arc for Zubac because... In the last time he played against Southern Series, Luka was dominating that man, and he didn't, his hands were bad. And in this one, he turned into Zual Sender, uh, what they call him, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Like, he was great. So if you're the Mavericks, I, I want to say your panic is maybe a six, because this is a game you feel like you should have won, specifically because there's no Kawhi. We don't know when Kawhi is going to come back. Will it be game number two? Will he come back at all? They, they say they're optimistic about it, but optimism don't stop the swelling in his knee. Um, but when you have the best player on the team, one of the best players in the world not playing a game, you should be able to take advantage of that, and they weren't able to. I thought in the second half they did a lot better in, in generating good and open shots for themselves. But when you put yourself in that much of a hole in the second quarter, it don't really matter. First half, Kyrie Irving was really bad. Second half, third quarter specifically, he was perfect. So I'm going to put it at like a six because like, hell, if we struggle with take, taking advantage of a team without Kawhi Leonard, imagine if he ever comes back. So I'll put it at a six. It's This is a huge, huge time for Jason Kidd, by the way, because I thought he got outcoached by a lot. Anytime you saw uh, the Mavericks go on a run, you saw Tyron Lue call timeout. It was a 6-0 run. Not even a crazy, not no 12-0 run. Not even an 8-0 run. 6-0 run. Tyron Lue said, boop, timeout. Out of timeout, sideline, out of bounds, play. Bucket after bucket after bucket. Stop the bleeding immediately. Stop the momentum immediately. Get our fans back into it by getting a lob that leads to a lay or a dunk. I thought he coached a great game. I didn't feel the same way about Kidd. Uh, I don't want to see much of Tim Hardaway Jr. in the series. That's 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 my opinion. My opinion. He might he might heat up. I know Tim Hardaway Jr. He could definitely heat up. Heat up. But if he's getting switched on to James and James is cooking him and he also did not heat up, it's like, what are we playing him for? Josh Green has a better opportunity to be in a pro player in this type of series, personally, but only time will tell. The Pacers lost game number one with no Giannis. A very similar thing that I said with the Dallas Mavericks that when you have the best player in the series missing the first game, you want to take advantage. And this one, the Pacers were not able to. It was, who time was it? It was Dame time in the first half because he didn't score in the second half. But if you put up 35 in the first half, who cares you're doing the second half? Chris Middleton hitting shots. You love that? I said it before. 
that because of the shuts, tough shot making of Damian Litter at his peak and Chris Middleton, I will never be able to close the door completely on the championship odds of the Milwaukee Bucks. Again, I'm still taking the Celtics to win the Eastern Conference, but I can't close the door completely because when Chris Middleton can hit the shots that he had today, that is a dangerous, dangerous team. Pascal Siakam gave the Pacers everything they can imagine. 36-13-2. Perfect game. But the rest, they generated 39 shots, jump shots, and 27 of them were wide open. They missed all of them, or close to all of them. And I'm panicking a little bit about our guy Tyrese Halliburton, man. Uh, I wanted him to be more aggressive and looking for his own shot. And I would assume that at game number two, he recognizes that, and we will not have a game with TJ McConnell shoots six more shots than him. I'm saying the panic meter is at a 6.9. Nice. Man, let's round it up to seven. Because, yeah, there was no Giannis and Dame took control. Now, maybe you can argue they're, they're worst team with Dame and Giannis play, uh, but the stats say otherwise. So I'm going to say I'm panicking a little bit about the Pacers because I thought that if Giannis wasn't playing, they had a good they matched up pretty well. Not tonight. But maybe it was just because they couldn't hit the shots. I'm changing my number from a 6.9 a 6 to a complete 6. Okay. And the Pelicans. I don't think they should worry that much, man. Yeah, they lost this game behind a missed dunk from Larry Nance, and they had the one possession where they got like 12 offensive rebounds, and they could not score on them 12 offensive rebounds. But ultimately, I think they played a, a grinded-out physical game against the youngest team in the playoffs. Uh, youngest one seed, I'm sorry. I think technically the, the Magic might be a younger team. It don't matter. It don't matter. They played a very physical game against a team that struggles with physicality i would say their panic meter is like a one like a, I, I still think the nuggets i mean the thunder are the better team and i still take them to win the series but if you're the pelicans you you, you are upset that you let that one slip through your hands but you're not thinking that this is the end of the road um and it's not i, I don't think it is i think they're going to play more competitive games this series that's rapid fire bro that took 13 minutes but if you want to <laughs> Hear me talk for 40 minutes about these games more in depth. The Candy Beach and Podcast is the way to go. The link is always in the description. I want to say I appreciate the love and support, and I'll see y'all tomorrow.